for the things that we faced last week, whatever they may have been. Uh, but God blessed us to make it here on this morning uh, to see you another day, but not only another day, the first day uh, of the week, Sunday morning. It's something about Sunday morning, y'all. And we just ought to be thankful that God has blessed us to be able to come together uh, as we have worshiped individually uh, during the week. But now we are here in corporate worship uh, on Sunday morning to magnify the Lord and encourage uh, and edify uh, one the other. This is Youth Sunday. Amen. Amen. And our youth are going to be uh, leading us in our order of services for today. And we're looking forward uh, to that. And uh, as such, we have a, a youth preacher uh, today. Amen. Amen. He ain't as young as he used to be, but he's younger than me. <laughs> Amen. We're looking forward to hearing from him on this morning. We'll be introducing, introducing him uh, a little later. You do know that the reason that we're here is because of God's love. It ain't because of us. Uh, it's not because we've been such good people. We try to be good. We try to be righteous. But we're here uh, because of the love of God. And because of how God loves us, he wants us to love each other Amen. the same way. Because that's how the world knows that we belong to God. So say this with me. We love, we love because God first loved us. God first loved us. Point at all your neighbors around you and say, I love you. It ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen. Amen. So don't even try. Don't even try. Amen. We're equally grateful uh, for God's love because we have this great privilege uh, of being able uh, to go to him uh, in prayer. Somebody said, and I teach this devotion this morning, I believe Brother Moses in his lesson presentation, he said, we don't have to ask anybody for permission to go to God. Amen, somebody. Amen. We can go to God on our own. Uh, and we're, we're thankful for that anytime anywhere, day or night, uh, God welcomes us to his throne, and today is no exception. We, we share these prayer requests on behalf of those who have made their prayer requests known, and as always, we ask that if you have your prayer journals, uh, we trust that you do, that you please take down these various prayer requests uh, in your prayer journals. Uh, and uh, be, on, be in prayer on behalf of those who have uh, made their prayer requests known. Continue to be in prayer for our brother and sister uh, Casey and sister Shirley Williams and the Williams family uh, during the loss uh, of their son, Myron Williams, uh, who was funeralized on this past uh, Thursday. All of those who came out to support uh, the Williams family, we thank you uh, as well. But let's continue to be in prayer uh, on behalf uh, of this family. Be in prayer for the Davis family uh, during the loss of Brother Ernest Davis. Uh, many of uh, you will know him by Bo Davis. Uh, this is the first cousin of Brother Carlton, Brother Keith, and Sister Gwen uh, Bynum. And also, uh, the brother, many of you know Sister Dorothy D. Berry. This is uh, her youngest brother, my classmate. Uh, amen. And uh, he passed away, I believe, on yesterday. So let's be in prayer for this family. Uh, in fact, they just lost a brother earlier this year. So let's be in prayer for this family as they uh, continue to go through their season. Sister Eunice Felton uh, stated that she has sinned and repented and requested the prayers of the church for forgiveness. Uh, she is also requesting prayer for family members uh, that are facing health issues. So let's be in prayer for Sister Eunice Felton uh, and her family uh, who are dealing with health challenges and, of course, Sister Felton uh, as she has uh, repented.
opinion of sin. Sister Michelle Miller is requesting prayers of thanksgiving uh, as she moves into a new role of uh, executive director for Memphis Rocks. Uh, amen. Amen. Uh, she is uh, also thankful for how God has led her in this process, and she is also asking for prayers of strength. Uh, and discernment as she represents Christ uh, in this role. So we thank God for Sister Miller and for how he is using her and for uh, this great opportunity. And we know that uh, she is and they will be blessed uh, as a result of her uh, being there. Continue to be in prayer for Sister Gwyneth McDowell. Uh, who is now home con as she continues to go through health challenges, uh, recently having uh, broken her arm, her arm from a fall. Uh, so let's continue to be in prayer uh, for her uh, as uh, she recovers from various health challenges. Uh, many of our senior saints are going through health challenges, so continue to be in prayer for all of them. Um, Continue to be in prayer for uh, Brother Glenn, uh, Sister Christmas, Brother and Sister um, um, Love, uh, and many others among us. Brother Percy Smith is out sick uh, on the day under the weather, so let's be in prayer uh, for him uh, as he uh, recovers from his uh, health challenges. Good to see Sister Tria. Uh, back uh, in the house today as she uh, has been dealing with uh, COVID and we thank God for bringing her through and uh, just thankful for all of those who are recovering from health challenges and who are still dealing with uh, health challenges. Uh, be in prayer for Sister Geneva uh, and her siblings as they will be traveling again uh, this weekend uh, as she, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> in fact, we just got back yesterday, and thank you for prayers on our behalf from uh, Chattanooga, uh, from the Tennessee State uh, Lectureship, and uh, she, she's going uh, back again uh, on Friday uh, to Huntsville. Uh, she's going to be uh, the speaker for the latest day at the church on the highway uh, in Huntsville, Alabama, and we're just thankful uh, as to how God is using her across the brotherhood uh, as she speaks to our ladies. And we thank God for uh, her for her gift. Be in prayer as well for the minister uh, to that congregation, Brother Walter Hartman, who is still hospitalized from uh, health challenges. They're still trying to determine uh, what's going on with him. He's lost a, uh, this is month or so ago, he stayed in here, lost 110 pounds, and uh, they can't figure out what's going on, so let's be in prayer, be in prayer for Brother Harley and, and his family and, and uh, uh, for, his, for his health challenges. Uh, be in prayer for our nation. Uh, we, we need the Lord. Uh, you, everyone is aware, I'm sure, of the shooting, uh, mass shooting that took place up in Maine of all places. Uh, in Maine, and uh, last, uh, at least last I heard, as of Friday, I don't know what happened yesterday, but uh, he was still, he has still not ap uh, been apprehended. Uh, they got him. Okay. All right. So, well, um, let's be in prayer uh, for the families, uh, for his family. Uh, they have suffered a great loss. Uh, we need Lord. And we, we, we need the Lord. Uh, Brother Kevin and I were, were talking about uh, this city. Uh, we need to be praying for our nation, uh, for this city. Uh, much of the crime that is being committed is, is among you uh, in this city. We need the Lord. So let's be in prayer for, for our world. Uh, many nations are engulfed in war. Uh, and uh, we, even in this
this nation not necessarily in military war, but we in, we in a war as we battle with the evils of Satan uh, every day uh, in this world. Go with us just now as we go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Oh, Lord, our Lord, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. And you have been our God throughout all generations. And Father, we thank you for, for being God, for being the everlasting God, for being Jehovah Jireh, El Shaddai. Thank you, Father, for being an able God, uh, a right now God, an on time God. Lord, and that Lord, we thank you for being our God. And we just say thank you all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that you will do in all of our lives. We thank you, Father, for life yet again on this fine side, and for this blessed privilege that we have to assemble ourselves together on this first day of the week uh, to praise and magnify and glorify your holy and divine name. We thank you for this blessed privilege that we have to come before your throne in prayer and to lay out all these various petitions uh, at your feet uh, that we might find help in times of need. Father, we come this morning on behalf of those who have made their requests known. Father, we ask your continued blessings for uh, the Williams family, uh, brother and sister KC, and the their children as uh, they have funeralized uh, their son, Myron. Comfort them, Father, as only you can. And give them strength to face the days ahead. And help them to know that you're able to see them through. Father, we pray for the Davis family. Uh, during the loss of uh, their brother, Ernest Davis, uh, our dear friend, classmate. Father, comfort this family. Uh, as they have uh, lost yet another brother uh, in uh, this recent months. Uh, they lost another brother. And Father, we just ask uh, for your confident grace on their behalf. Give them strength, lift them up, hold them up with your mighty arm, and help them to know that you're able to see them through. Father, we pray for the Wiggins and the Howard family uh, during the loss of uh, Brother Henry Howard. Uh, who was funeralized on yesterday, comfort this family and give them strength, Father, and help them to hold on to your unchanging hands. Father, we pray for Sister Eunice Felton, uh, who has stated that she has uh, repented of sin and uh, she requests uh, forgiveness. We know that you have already forgiven her and cast her sins into a sea of forgiveness, never to remember them again. Father, bless her now. Uh, to strive to walk faithfully uh, in the things that you have uh, given her to do. And Father, we pray additionally for her family, uh, for family members who face health challenges. Father, you know what they are. You know what they need. And Father, we just ask that you please bless them right where they need to be blessed. Father, we thank you for answered prayer on behalf of Sister Michelle Miller and for the blessings that you have blessed her with uh, in her new position, her new role. Bless her now that she will uh, be guided by you in, in everything that, uh, that she does and all of her tasks that is performed in this new position. And Father, we know uh, that you will use her in a mighty way, and we just ask uh, that uh, you receive all the praise and all the glory uh, and all the honor. Father, we ask your continued blessings for Sister Gwyneth McDowell. Bless her health uh, as she continues to face many health challenges. And Father, we just ask that you can continue to bless her spirit to be strong and be high, and we just ask that you bless us as extended family. Uh, to continue to be a source of strength and encouragement for her as she goes through this time. Father, for many 
among us who are sick and infirm. We ask your continued blessings, particularly among those who are our family, our mature family. Uh, Father, we ask your blessings for Brother Glenn yes, uh, and many others uh, who are sick and infirm. Uh, we ask your blessing for Brother Percy Smith, yes. uh, who is under the weather on today. Bless his health. Uh, that it might be restored and that he will soon uh, be able to be back with us uh, at the next appointed time. Father, for those who are traveling, Amen. we ask your blessings for Sister Geneva and her siblings and others who will be traveling for the latest day this weekend uh, in Huntsville uh, at the church on the highway. Bless uh, her. Uh, Bless those who will be traveling, that they will reach their destination safely, be safe while there, and then return home safe at the appointed time and find all well. Be with, be with this church, and particularly be with Brother Hartley and his family as he deals with major health challenges. And Father, you know his condition. We just ask, Father, that you visit him and bless his health. Get, guide those who give care to him doctors and the nurses and the specialists and give them insight uh, regarding his health and Father I pray is, is that his health uh, will be restored to a reasonable portion if it is your holy and divine will and Father we just ask that you be with this nation we need you every day and every hour those families in uh, Maine who have lost loved ones Father, we ask a double portion of strength. Those who have uh, been wounded uh, as a result of gunfire. Uh, and Father, even the family of this one who uh, caused all of the hurt. Bless them and help them uh, to know that you're still able because uh, they have suffered loss as well. Father, for the nations that are engulfed in war, we need you. Father, please allow all men to live at peace one with the other. And Father, we ask that you please be with this city uh, as we face much uh, city that is engulfed in crime and evil. Uh, Father, help us to know that you are the answer. Help us as your people, as a body of believers, to be a light that sits on a hill uh, that draws men out of darkness into the marvelous light. Now, God, as we prepare to uh, engage in this worship experience, assist us in laying aside all of the distractions and all of the things that might hinder us from giving you the worship that you desire, and that he is in spirit and in truth. May we be edified. May the devil be horrified. But most of all, may your mighty name be glorified. In the name of the ruling, reigning, returning, Redeemer, we pray in Jesus' name. Let us together sing. church um, our first selection today will be Holy Spirit dwell in me Holy Spirit dwell in me touch my eyes that I might see all your goodness grace and power oh stand beside me every hour be my drink be my lead Give me shelter, O oh, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, dwell in me. O oh, Holy Spirit, comfort me. Let my heart be one with Thee. When I. And may I run this wicked race Filled by your amazing grace O oh, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, comfort me 
Good morning. Good morning. Today's scriptures come from Ruth chapter 2, verse 11 through 13. Boaz replied, I've been told all about what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, how you left your father and mother in your homeland and came to live with a people you did not know before. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. My May I continue to find favor in your eyes, my Lord. She said, you have put me at ease by speaking kindly to your servant. Though I do not do the standing of one of your servants. Ruth chapter 2 verse 11 through 13. Let us go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, God, for all that you are and all that you have been. We thank you, God, for being a great God, an unchanging God in the midst of the world that is constantly changing. Thank you for your consistency and righteousness. Thank you for being a God that loves us and a God that supplies us all of our needs. We come on behalf of those that are are that are going through health challenges. Be with them and make them better. I pray for us as youth as we navigate through life. Bless us to put you first and be examples to our friends. Protect us and guide us. Help us to know that you are the only way to survive this world today. Please steady our minds and hearts to focus only on you. Be with the minister as he brings forth your word. May we be attentive in our listening. We ask that you will remove anything from our hearts and mind that will hinder us from hearing your word as you intend. Forgive us for our sins. We thank you for your son, Jesus, and in his mighty name that we humbly pray. Amen. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Amen, amen. What a joy it is to see these young folks serving the Lord uh, and being faithful uh, in serving the Lord. Amen. Amen. We thank, we thank God for them and uh, we get excited uh, when it comes time for you Sunday. Amen. Because that's what we engaged in today uh, is youth Sunday. Uh, it's still Sunday morning. It's still the Lord's day. But our youth are leading us uh, in worship. Uh, on this morning, and so we are thankful to God uh, for them and, and for the fine way uh, in which they are there. Has God been good to you? Yeah, yeah. I, I know He's been good to you because you're here. Amen, amen. We we on on top of dirt, dirt ain't on top of us. Amen. Somebody, and uh, we we thank God for all that he has done and continues to do uh, in all of our lives. We are delighted to have uh, with us today as our guest speaker for uh, this Youth Sunday, 
Uh, he comes in the person of Brother Kevin Red. He's no stranger uh, to us. He's been with us on numerous occasions. Uh, outstanding gospel preacher. Uh, and we thank God for him. I tell him all the time, he's a carbon copy, carbon copy of his daddy, uh, Dr. Hal Red. And uh, if you don't know Dr. Red, uh, just, you know, as soon as Kevin gets up here, you know, he sounds like him, he preaches like him, he looks like him. Amen. Amen. But uh, we thank God for, for Kevin. Uh, he currently labors with the uh, Parkway or Park Avenue, rather, Church of Christ. Uh, he formerly has been the minister to the militant. Uh, Church of Christ, I believe he was there for about six years, uh, and he preaches across the city in many venues, uh, various events, uh, and uh, he is a dynamic gospel preacher, but not only that, he is an administrator uh, with Baptist Hospital. In fact, uh, he was instrumental in ensuring and helping us uh, to acquire the mammogram Mobile that was here uh, for our health fair uh, this year and uh, had a good time uh, doing our health fair and uh, much good came from their services. And so thank you, Kevin, again for uh, all of your effort and support uh, in that. And, and uh, he's always willing to help us in any way we can, any way that he can, brother, uh, when it comes to our health fair. So we just thank God. Uh, for him uh, in that effort. And so uh, we, we're uh, not going to take much of his time on this morning. We're going to get out of his way uh, and let him have his way. But uh, we thank God for him being here and him consenting to come uh, on this uh, suits and sneaker Sunday and skirts and sneakers. Amen. Everybody all dapped out. Y'all looking good. And we appreciate you uh, uh, being involved in that. The last time I got in trouble, um, you know, uh, they said suits and sneakers. And I had this nice pair of sneakers. You know, I really had one, you know, red, black, and white. I'm like, okay, that will look good with a black suit. And uh, I got in trouble because I wore red. And uh, I ain't calling no name as to who I got in trouble with. But I just want Lily Reed to know today. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, I'm following instruction. Because I ain't getting in trouble no more. <laughs> Amen. But uh, thank God for Brother Ryan uh, Burks. A youth minister who uh, came up with this idea earlier this year, and everybody just uh, bought into it, and we, we thank God for your participation. As our song leader leads us in a song of his choosing, uh, we're going to bring this great gospel preacher, preacher up and let him have his way on this morning. The next voice you will hear after a selection of song will be that of our dear friend and brother from the Park Avenue. Church of Christ, Brother Kevin Reed. Come on. Our invitation song will be soon and very soon. And oh, I want to see him. As I journey through the land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, through the crimson flow, many arrows pierce my soul from without within. But my Lord leads me on, and through Him I must win. And I'm singing, I want to see Him. Look up His face and. Forever of his saving grace on the streets of. 
each one of you. Good morning. I want to take a few minutes to, to thank all of you for having me this morning and thank Brother Jackson for inviting me. It's always good to be here. Um, Brother Jackson and everywhere else I go, people tell me I look like my dad, Brother Jackson. It's youth Sunday. I ain't that old. <laughs> I hear that just about every day of my life. We're going to be in the book of Ruth. We're going to do a, take a brief journey through Ruth. And what I want to do with this message is teach you whether you are a young person, whether you're guiding a young person, or whether maybe you're not such a young person. It is always better to choose the blessings of God than the pleasures of and the products of this world. In 2022, there was a 42% increase in crimes in Shelby County that were committed by juveniles over 2021. There was a 29% increase in youth who were charged with delinquent crimes in Shelby County. In the community that we live, more than half of all crimes were committed by people under the age of 24. So we've got all of these forums and all of these solutions, and, and I, I am in favor of all those. We need more programs. We may need more for these young people to do. But what I want to show you this morning if you are a young person, let me teach you that it's better to take the blessings of God every single time. And I want to do that by showing you uh, this journey through the story, through the, the book of Ruth. Um, just a quick overview of who Ruth is, and then we'll get into the text. Ruth is a widowed woman. She is the widow of Mahon, who is Naomi's son. She's a Moabite woman. She's loyal to her mother-in-law, Naomi. And that is great character. And through her loyalty, even in a foreign land where she really does not belong, what Ruth did was took the blessings of God and her many, many, many people were blessed all throughout the world. And even to this very day, you and I are still being blessed because of Ruth. Let's watch it start out in chapter 1. 
chapter 1, verse number 1 of Ruth. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. And a man of Bethlehem and Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. Let me just stop there for a hot second. In the days of the judges, do y'all remember what the theme of the book of Judges is? In those days, the people of Israel did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. So now we're placing Ruth in this time where people are doing whatever they want to do. They have completely forsaken all the laws and statutes that God had provided, and they're worshiping Baal and doing flat out whatever they want to do, self-indulgence, murder, whatever it is, your heart desires, go do it. That's the environment that Ruth is in. How familiar does that sound? These people are living with no regard for God, no regard for his law, no regard for what is honorable. Going down to the second chapter, after Ruth and Naomi and Ruth's brother-in-law had died, left three widows, Naomi the mother, Ruth, the daughter-in-law, and Orpah, the other daughter-in-law. Verse 11 picks up. Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Have I yet sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way. For I am going to have a husband. If I should say, have hope. Even if I should have a husband this night and should bear sons, would you therefore wait until they were grown? Would you therefore refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, because it's bitter for me for your sake that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. And she said, see, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people, to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, do not urge me to leave you or return from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. And your God shall be my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be married. This is a premium statement by Ruth. May God do to me and more if anything but death parts from me. And when Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more. It's a little bit more of setting the stage. Here is this widow and her two daughters-in-law. And the widow herself urges them, y'all don't stay here with me. Go back to where you're comfortable. Go back and honor yourself. Do for yourself. And one of them did. But Ruth said, I'm, I'm not going to do that. She's got an option to go back to her mother and her father and where she's comfortable, where she knows she's going to be taken care of. But instead... She chooses a selfless path, stays with her mother-in-law. And they go on from Moab into Judah. And since Ruth chose to do an honorable thing, she met a man in Judah named Boaz. Boaz was a wealthy man. And he's got all these fields, and he's got all this food. So Ruth goes to work in Boaz's field. Chapter 2, verse 11. Bo, well, Boaz asks, who is Ruth? And in verse 11, it picks up. Boaz answered, 
all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband have been fully told to me, how you left your father and mother and your native land and came to a people that you did not know before. Verse 12, I really want you to hear. The Lord repay you for what you have done. And a full reward be given to you by God. The God of Israel under whose wings you have come. I hope you're following it. Ruth takes a selfless path. Goes to take care of her mother-in-law. That's just a godly character. Starts working in a field just trying to find food for her and her mother-in-law. And the owner of the field finds out. You know why he found out? Because with the character Ruth lived, people had already told him. And he told her, people have already told me who you, who you are. They told me what kind of person you are. And God is going to repay you. Let me give you a reminder. Young, old, or whatever you are, it's still better to take the blessings of God. Ruth had options. Character. Move along, verse to chapter 3, watch it again. Boaz said, May you be blessed by the Lord, my daughter. You have made this last kindness greater than the first. You have not gone after young men, whether poor or rich. And now, my daughter, don't fear. Everything I will you ask, I will do. My fellow townsmen, know that you are a worthy man. Now it is true that I am a redeemer, yet there is a redeemer nearer than I. Ruth goes on. Decides that she wants to marry Boaz. Boaz does not object. <laughs> and he tells her, God is going to bless you, your kindness, your character. God's going to reward you. Everyone knows what kind of person you are. And so by the time you get to the end of the book, Ruth chapter 4, verse number 13, Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. And he went into her and the Lord gave her conception. She bore a son. Then she said to Ruth, said, Now we blessed be the Lord who has not left you this day without a redeemer. And may his name be renowned in Israel. He shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age for your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is more to you than seven sons has given birth to him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him on her lap and became his nurse. And the women of the neighborhood gave him a name saying, A son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. Verse number 18, Ruth says, Now these are the generations of Perez, father of Hezron, Hezron, father of Ram, Ram, father of Amenadab, Amenadab, father of Nashon, Nashon, father of Salmon, Salmon, Father Boaz, Boaz fathered Obed, Obed fathered Jesse, Jesse fathered David, who was Solomon's father. So now all the way from this widow who went to a foreign land not knowing anybody but her mother-in-law when she could have gone back home. Suddenly the great-grandmother of one of the most prolific in the history of the world. Great, great grandmother of the wisest king to ever live. I hope you can see it. Every single one of us in this room right now, young people, you are going to have options. 
But let me remind you, it's better to take the blessings of God. What are we learning from all of this? For young people, or old people, in 2023. First thing you've already heard. It is better to take the blessings of God. If you have options to do anything, there is always the option to choose the path of the blessings of God. Do you know why? Because God is a God of great reward. He's not this human being like what we would imagine. So don't get everything twisted. He's not going to get it mixed up and get a reward that, to, to, that ultimately ends with something that's wrong. He's not going to punish you for doing right. He's not going to reward you for doing wrong. Don't get that mixed up. It might last, or you might get a temporary reward for a second. But one that doesn't come from God. And his rewards are full. You might not see the end of God's reward in your life. They're not going to be partial. They're not going to be some reward that we see only on this time side of life. You know what Ruth never saw? She never saw the temple built. But she was very influential in it. Ruth never saw David's leadership. But yet through the blessings of God. She received this reward that was much fuller than just something on this earth. Sure, she got the reward of a husband in Boaz. Sure, she got the reward in Boaz's wealth. Absolutely, she got the reward in being able to keep her word to her mother-in-law. But there, there is a reward that's much fuller than what she ever saw. Here's the other side. Absolutely. God is a God of reward. And if you choose his blessings, he's going to take care of you. But he's also a God of justice. And let's be real clear. God's rewards are not limited to just the good. Don't get that twisted either. God can repay you and exercise judgment if you choose a path that is deviant from the blessings of God. You are going to reap exactly what you sowed. And I don't know what could be worse than reaping godly judgment on yourself. Young people, you've got the options. If you need money, you can go rob. You might even get away with it for a minute. If you're lonely and you need popularity and you want to go to school and do everything that makes you the most popular person in the building, even still, the blessings of God are richer than popularity. Better to take the blessing rather than these temporary, illicit pleasures of the world. In these environments when people just do whatever they want. Don't get caught up in all that. Get caught up in the workings and the character of your creator. Here's the second thing that I want to show you. It's better to take the blessings of God. Choose the blessings of God. But also adapt your life to the 
character that God expects. You know how to do that? At least one way. We found it in Ruth. Choosing service over self. Choosing other people over yourself. Do you know why people commit crime? Do you know why all of this crime is being committed by young people? They want that paper. I, I, I just did that. I want this. I want that. I, 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 me, me, me. And after we chase all of these self-serving, illicit pleasures that are absent of godly character, we end up in a bad place. We know in our community, young people, 53% of the people who are chasing these things and committing these crimes, you know what we don't? focus a whole lot on, we, we focus on the fact that they do the crime, and that the character is absent of God. You know where that character lands 53% of those people? In jail. Don't let your character lead you to a place that you don't want to be. Be a selfless person, and being a selfless person is a choice. It absolutely is possible. From a baby child, we've been told, I, 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 me, 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 have more self-esteem, have confidence. And I'm all for that. Have self-esteem. Be confident in who you are. But be more confident in who your God is. Because Self-sacrifice that is produced by godly character is a blessing. It's a blessing to you like it was to Ruth. I remember going to a place called Scotland when I was in college. And I went over there because we were told there was a need for people to share Jesus. And I went and I thought, okay, I'll go over there. And I remember going over there with a group of people that I knew. And by the time I got to Scotland and got on the bus to go to where I was, I was supposed to live, I remember thinking, man, I'm all the way over here in this foreign place. What in the world am I doing here? Everything looked different. The people looked different. It wasn't like Memphis. There was no paper on the street. thinking, what am I doing here? <laughs> Ultimately, I was there to serve other people. And despite being nervous on the trip there, because I had no business being there, I thought, that trip became one of the biggest blessings in my life. And to this very day, I still have people over in Scotland that I love. That will do things for me. It was a blessing for me. Just like taking care of Naomi was a blessing for Ruth. You might think, I, I don't, I, I can't live with that type of character right now. You see, you see brother, if, if I give them this, if I give them my money, then I ain't, I ain't gonna have nothing to get what I gotta have. If I go spend time with these elderly people and just talk to them, then I, I can't go to basketball practice. You know, I'm in the NBA. First of all, you ain't. But let me remind you, it's better to take the blessings of God than to reward yourself with the products of this world. Blessings of God are not inferior. It's not inferior to wealth. The blessings of God are not inferior to popularity. Not inferior to everyone knowing who you are and having the highest regard because your YouTube channel is the best around. The blessings of God are far more superior. Watch it. The Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve. 
indulged themselves, self-serving themselves and their indulgence brought into the world death. Ruth chose selflessness and a God character and her selflessness brought into this world life. Hope this can be a lesson for all of us. Choose godly character that begins with selflessness. And God will reward that godly character far more than you can imagine. Isn't it a great reward to produce something down the road rather than spend 30 years in jail? Which one would you pick? Choose the character of God, blessings of God, the character of God. The last thing I want to show you is don't be so short-sighted that you miss out on the vision of God. It's a challenge to you, young, old. Don't be where you can't catch a vision can't catch a vision of God or what God might be doing with your life. That's how we lead to all this delinquent behavior. But Ruth started out as a widow in a strange land. How would you feel if you went over to a strange place, if you went somewhere in Europe, if you didn't know a soul. And by the time the book ends, she's portrayed as the grandmother of a man after God's own heart. The great grandmother of the wisest king who built the most magnificent structure to the glory of God. It's Ruth. The wife of Boaz. Boaz, the father of Obed. Obed, the father of Jesse. Jesse, the father of David. David, the father of Solomon. All from the lineage of a widow. But guess what? The story does not end there. Solomon had Rehoboam. Rehoboam had Abijah. Abijah had Asaph, Asaph had, had, had Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat had Joram and Isaiah, Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah, Manasseh, Amaz, Amaz, Josiah, Jeconiah, Shildo, Zerubbabel, Abijah, Eliakim, Zadok, Achim, Eliad, Eleazar, Mathen, Jacob, Joseph. And at the end of Joseph, from the beginning of Ruth, is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. All from a widow. The Lord will repay you, Ruth. And he repaid Ruth with the Savior of the living world, of whom we are all benefactors. I can only hope. That through the blessings that God gave Ruth and through her character, she caught a glimpse of the vision that God was doing something. Don't be so short-sighted that you want to go to a party instead of going and doing something at church that might produce fruit Ten generations down the road. Don't be so excited that you like money because you don't even know there's a such thing as the blessings of God. Don't 
simply so short-sighted that you choose friends who don't understand what godly character is. The vision of God that came just from a selfless widow. This morning, let me give you a challenge. It's better to be a Christian than to be extremely popular. Being a Christian is going to produce for you greater long-term blessings of God than worldly popularity. This morning, young people, old people, you somewhere in between like me. <laughs> if you're not a Christian, don't be so short-sighted. Why don't you give your life to Christ and we can baptize you and you can start your way on a journey that is full of blessings with God, on a life that is full of godly character, and on a vision that God can use you to bless the entire world. If you need prayer, if you, need, if you have been baptized, Maybe you've not been living with that godly character. The beauty of the cross that our Savior died on is that all you have to do is come back and repent and start all over. Once again, you can give your life right back to Christ and be a benefactor of those blessings. Don't be afraid. If you're nervous. I don't want to go up there in front of all those people. Don't be excited. Take those blessings. Wherever you are in your Christian walk, whatever you need, why don't you come? We'll sing with you. We'll pray with you. We stand and sing our song of encouragement. Soon and very soon. We are going to see the King soon and soon and very soon. We are going to see the King soon and very soon. We are going to see the King. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the King. I said, no more crying there. We are going to see the king. Oh, no more crying there. We are going to see the king. And no more crying there. We are going to see the king. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Brother Red, for another, well, for an amazing message on this Youth Sunday. Amen. Choosing the blessings of God. It's better to take the blessings of God. Adapt your life to the character God expects and don't miss out on the vision of God. A, a, a number of good points this Sunday morning, and I, and I hope it's something that you could have taken from it as I have this day. And we can be like Ruth and become the catalyst to affect the future in our youth.
Uh, I do have one who have responded today, and it's from uh, Sister Pat Kincaid. She's asking for traveling grace for herself, as she'll be traveling to Clarksville, Tennessee, on tomorrow morning, uh, which is Monday. Uh, we will do that, and at this time, will you please bow your heads and pray with me? Dear Lord, we come again thanking you for all that you've done, all that you will do, dear Lord. We thank you for being you, for the path that you laid for us in the past, the path that you laid for us currently, and where we will be in the future, dear Lord. We just come thank you. Our cup is truly full of the blessings and the rewards that you have given us. And dear Lord, we just come thank you for this day, dear Lord, we can have our youth come up and become the catalyst for who we will be as a church in the future, dear Lord. We just come praying that we as members can continue to nurture them and continue to be along with them, dear Lord. We just come praying for the path that you have set for us and for others, dear Lord, that we may not be selfish and that we may understand the vision that you have for us. And understanding that what you have for us you was set before we were even a twinkle in anyone's eyes, dear Lord. Continue to Push us to be better Christians so that we can push others, dear Lord, that we can be like Ruth and become the catalyst for another great generation. We just come praying that you may continue to be with us. And we come praying for Sister Kincaid as she will be traveling uh, coming up, that you may be with her and that, it may, and that she may be safe. For those who are sick and shut in, for those who are troubled, dear Lord, you know all of our issues. At this time, we just come asking for forgiveness for all of our sins. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our song for communion will be In Gethsemane Alone. Oh, what wondrous love I see freely shown for you and me by the one who did atone just to show his matchless grace Jesus suffered for the race in Gethsemane alone. Oh, oh, what love, what matchless love. Oh, Good morning, brothers and sisters. We come to another part of worship known as communion, which we use to give thanks and remember Jesus. We commune according to Matthew chapters 26, verses 26 through 29. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Tank and eat, this is my body. And he took a cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink, ye, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for remission of sins. I tell you, I will not drink henceforth of the fruit of the vine from now until that day when I drink this new you in my Father's kingdom. The Bible also teaches us when we are to commune, according to Acts chapter 20, verses 6 to 12. And we set away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread and came unto them to Troas in five days, where we abode seven days. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and he did his speech unto the night. And there were many lights in the upper chamber, where they were gathered together, and there sat in the window a certain young man named Titus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep, and fell down from the third loft, and was taken up dead. And Paul went down and fell on him, and embraced him, said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. When he therefore was come up again and had broken bread and eaten and talked a long while even to break of day, so he departed. And they brought the young man alive and were not a little comfort. 
Let us pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to commune on this Sunday. And I thank you for all the blessings you bestowed upon us. We thank you for this bread and remember Jesus' body. Amen. And thank you for this cup and remember Jesus' blood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we worship today at the point of giving, what a powerful message on the blessings of God. In the Genesis, Cain and Abel, you know the story. Abel gave of the first fruits, the best that he had. Because of that, Cain became angry. say to him, remind him, if, if you do well, you'll be blessed too. I, I got more blessings. Give your best. But of course, we know the rest of the story. Because of his anger, he took his brother's life. When we follow Make up our minds that we're going to receive the blessings of God. God will, when you give him your best, he'll send so much back to you that you won't have room. He'll open up the windows of heaven. And so my encouragement to you this morning is try it. And see when he bless you. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. And uh, again, we, we commend this Boulevard family. Uh, we continue to do well. Uh, Amen. Yet there are those of us who perhaps are not quite there yet. Uh, follow the blessings of God. And, and he'll, he'll send blessings back to you every time. Amen. Amen. Let's be mindful of that uh, as we worship with our gifts on this morning. Let's pray. Merciful God in heaven, we're so thankful for uh, your goodness toward us. We, we thank you, Father, for uh, all of your blessings from our earliest existence to this present moment. Blessings that are physical, and we especially thank you for blessings that are spiritual. Father, you have given us the assurance that if we follow and go after your blessings, you'll ensure uh, that we have all that we need. Help us to be mindful of that today as we give back to you. As we have prospered, help us to show you how much we love you by the way that we give back to you. Father, our prayer is, is that the receiving of these funds uh, be used in wisdom, guidance, and prudence uh, as we seek to do kingdom business in this White Haven community, in this city of Memphis, and more in the world, as I pray. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray and give thanks always. We bless together and say, amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. And we had a wonderful time. Uh, on this morning. Amen. 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 These young men have led us in such a wonderful way in our worship service. And then this powerful, powerful message from Brother Kevin Reed. Amen. The, the story of, of Ruth and the blessings of God. Amen, somebody. Powerful, powerful word. Thank you, Kevin blessing us in such a powerful, powerful way uh, 
on this morning. I didn't, did not mention in my introduction uh, that Kevin is married, and, and I thought that he was going to give him a few points <laughs> by, by introducing his wife and, and his family who are here this morning. Uh, Jewel and the children, if y'all stand, just, just stand up for, for, for a moment and let everybody see who you are. Amen. Wonderful. Good to see y'all. Thank you for being here. Uh, amen. And uh, I, I'm, you know, I, I'm trying to help you out, but anyway. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, thank y'all for being here. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, to all of our guests and friends. Uh, it has been our great joy to have had you here on this morning. Other places you could have gone in this city, uh, but you chose to be with the people of God on the boulevard. And we don't take that for granted. We thank you for being here because after all, the boulevard is a place of belonging. that leads to a place of blessing. Amen, somebody. Amen. If you're visiting and you'd like to stand and let us know who you are and where you're visiting from, we want to give you that uh, great privilege. To my far right, if there are those who are visiting, you like stand, let us know who you are. To my right, any visitors? Any visitors? Okay. Nobody to my far right? In the center. Any visitors? You're visiting with us. All right. And then to my far left, any visitors uh, over here? You like stand. Let us know who you are. All right. We are all family. All right. Well, thank you again for being here. Please, please come back uh, and be with us uh, again. Let me uh, just remind you by way of a couple of quick announcements. I had some cards that I, wa I was supposed to have been acknowledging, but you know the preacher can't keep up with stuff. So they're somewhere in my office, and when I find them, I will acknowledge the cards. I will acknowledge the cards uh, that I was supposed to have been acknowledging uh, on this morning. So please forgive me uh, uh, for that. Uh, our fall revival, uh, just around the corner, uh, we have a great time uh, in store for you with these great men of God uh, who are going to be here to, uh, to engage in our fall revival, November the 12th through the 15th. Uh, so start inviting your visitors, friends, and family, uh, neighbors. Uh, we want to have a good time. We need to be revived, church. Amen. Amen. Look, uh, God been good to us, but it don't hurt us to be revived. Amen. As we try to end the year on a, on a high note and be prepared to go with the Lord's willing, uh, we see uh, 2024 uh, that this revival will will. Uh, move us in that direction. So please be prepared to be here each night, 6 p.m. Uh, we, we move from the traditional Church of Christ, 7 o'clock uh, p.m. time to uh, 6 p.m. starting time. I'm trying to get you in earlier, try to get you out a little earlier. Amen. So each night, uh, 6 p.m., we're looking forward to a great time in the Lord. Uh, Begin in November the 12th. And then I believe our youth minister and, and the counselors uh, will have some treats for uh, our youth out in the lobby after we dismiss, of course, Tuesday is Halloween. Um, be careful. Uh, be safe. Uh, and uh, there's a lot going on, so and, and, uh, we want to try to give a few treats to our youth today. Uh, amen. So, so parents, uh, please, if you have small children, get those, uh, and please uh, allow them to, if they're going to open it in the lobby, amen. Please don't let them uh, bring the goodies and candies or whatever back into the worship center. And then for those who are going to uh, get some throw rolls on Saturday up to Lambert's, uh, that's, you know, that's, that's where, where they have the throw rolls at Lambert's restaurant. Some of y'all have a clue what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, those of y'all who, who are going on the trip <laughs> on Saturday, Saturday morning, the bus leaves at 7 a.m. Amen. So you can get it whatever time you want to, but the bus leaves at 7. 
<laughs> so just just be aware. Uh, and I, we know you're going to have a good time uh, on that trip. Amen. Uh, if I can believe it, God can achieve it. So help me to show it so that God, the others may know it. Give God some praise as we stand on our feet uh, to be dismissed. God bless you. Take the Lord with you. You ought to take the Lord with you, children. Everywhere you go, you ought to take the Lord with you, children. Everywhere you go, to take the Lord with you, children. In a home, on a job, when you're all alone, the highway, the byway, you ought to take. once again so we may learn more about your word and take a wonderful message that we've heard today and bring it out into the world to your children that don't know. Let us all have a faith and a zeal like Ruth so we may become better Christians and add to your fold. In Jesus' name we pray.